Hi folks, my name is Cole, and I'm a graduate student of immunology. Today on Investigate, Explore, Discover, we're going to be looking at how sleep affects the immune system. So hang around with me to get all of the relevant background information so that way we can dive into some exciting experimental results. Plus, at the end, I'll tell you how to get your hands on a free NFT. Now, to the topic at hand, sleep. Sleep is an essential function that allows your body and mind to recharge, leaving you refreshed and alert when you wake up. As humans, we sleep for one large continuous chunk of time during the day. This is described as a monophasic sleep pattern, and the amount of time that we really require to be sleeping changes depending on how old we are. When we're younger, we require much more sleep during the day to help facilitate growth and healing and all the energy that we expend when we're kids. But as we age into adulthood, we require about seven to nine hours of sleep every night. Now, what's interesting to know is that worldwide, about 50% of people are saying that they are getting enough sleep, while as one in four are actively saying they are not getting enough sleep. In the United States, studies show that one in three people are just not getting enough sleep. And roughly 62% of adults worldwide feel that they don't sleep well when they go to bed, regardless of how much sleep they're getting. Now, one of the direct consequences of not getting enough sleep is feeling drowsy. And drowsiness has been a significant factor in roughly 100,000 car accidents every year, causing an estimated 1,500 deaths. And sleep deficiency has also been linked to a number of different disasters, such as airplane and boat accidents, and even nuclear reactor meltdowns. To get the appropriate amount of about seven to nine hours of sleep every night, it's in part regulated by our bodies by something called the circadian rhythm, which is a natural internal process that is regulated by different genes that control our sleep and wake cycle and repeats roughly every 24 hours. Now, there are many positive aspects of getting enough sleep. You help consolidate memories. Uh, you maintain better physical and mental health as well, you are able to concentrate better. Your metabolism is regulated, and it also contributes to muscle repair and recovery. Contrast this to when you do not get enough sleep. This can lead to a impairment of your judgment and concentration, uh, a decrease in your reaction time, a release of more appetite-stimulating hormones, your emotions are heightened as well, and your immune system is suppressed and increases your risk of illnesses. Now, poor sleep has been implicated in the development of diabetes, in cancer, and in heart disease. Something that I think most people can personally relate to is the results of a really interesting study that showed that with every hour of sleep lost, the risk of catching a cold actually increases. That means that sleep is affecting our immune system in some way. Now, our immune system is made up of many different types of cells and processes that all work together. But today, what we're going to focus on is the innate immune system. The innate immune system mediates fast-acting and non-specific responses to different types of infections, such as bacteria or viruses. Now, today we're going to focus on two particular types of cells in the innate immune system. We're going to focus on macrophages and their precursors, monocytes, and we're going to focus on neutrophils, also called polymorphonuclear cells. Now, we do know some things about sleep and how it affects our immune system. We know that as we sleep, the numbers of immune cells in our bodies actually decrease. But this does not correlate to a loss in immune function. In fact, even though there are less cells, these cells have an increased capacity for pro-inflammatory responses. Now, all the different immune cells in our body are not present everywhere at the same time. Most of our immune cell types are present in our blood, as they are circulating through our body to go and deposit into different areas. The reason why these cells can migrate to different areas in the body is in part due to chemokine receptors, and chemokines attract cells to their location. These chemoattractants can be recognized by many different proteins on the outside of the cell, such as chemokine receptor 2, G-coupled protein receptor, and intracellular adhesion molecules. There are many different mechanisms by which our immune cells can fight infections. One of the ways that our immune cells can do this is by phagocytosing or uptaking bacteria and destroying it inside of the cell. Inside the cell, these bacteria are exposed to agents called reactive oxygen species, which help to destroy these pathogens. Now, I wanna take a step back and really highlight why studying how sleep affects the immune system 
is important. As it stands, we actually don't have many studies elucidating how sleep specifically promotes host defense. And there are no studies that look at how sleep affects the innate immune cells function throughout the body. Therefore, by studying this, this can help orient our daily routines and guide our actions when we're sick. Now, if you also think these are some good reasons to be studying how sleep affects the immune system, go ahead and give the like button a tap. This brings us to the paper that we're talking about today called Sleep Enhances Numbers and Functions of Monocytes and Improves Bacterial Infection Outcome in Mice by Han et al. from the University of Tübingen, Tübingen, Germany. And in this paper, they analyzed the acute effects of sleep on innate immune phagocytes and measured the functional outcome in responses to bacterial infection using a mouse model. They utilized a mouse model whereby they allowed one group to sleep and kept one group of mice awake during when they would normally sleep now, to keep these mice awake, they monitored them for six hours, and every time they started to fall asleep, they would gently prod them to make sure that they were awake. And after doing this, they compared immune cell populations to see what was occurring. In the blood of these mice, they found actually fewer monocytes in mice that were kept awake. And they found fewer polymorphonuclear cells, or PMNs. They also looked in the spleen and found similar results in that mice kept awake had fewer monocytes, and fewer polymorphonuclear cells. In looking at what might be causing this effect, they looked at different aspects that impact immune cell populations. One of the first things they looked at was corticosterone, which is a hormone that is known to reduce blood monocyte numbers. And regardless of whether these mics were kept awake or allowed to sleep, corticosterone levels were pretty much unchanged. They next looked at the number of dead cells in the blood because they figured, well, if they have lower cell populations, perhaps more of these cells are dying. This was not the case, though, as mice that were allowed to sleep actually had more dead monocytes in the blood and slightly more dead monocytes in the spleen. They next looked in the bone marrow where immune cells are generated and found that monocytes in the bone marrow of mice that were kept awake or allowed to sleep were pretty similar. Now, they thought as well, maybe these lower level of monocytes in the blood are due to immune cells migrating into different tissues. So they first looked in the lung and found that this was also not the case, as mice kept awake had fewer monocytes in the lungs. When they compared polymorphonuclear cells, they found that these cell levels in the lung were actually pretty similar. In addition to looking at monocytes and PMNs in the lungs, they also looked at macrophage levels of different tissues throughout the body because you get resident macrophages throughout your body. So they looked in the lungs and the lymph nodes and they found that migrating macrophages are actually similar throughout the body. Thus, immune cell migration is not really affecting observed cell levels. So this conclusion led them to ask what happens when mice recover sleep? So we know that mice that are allowed to sleep have more immune cells than mice that are kept awake. But when these mice that were kept awake were allowed to rest, they actually allowed the immune cell populations to recover over what the mice that were just allowed to sleep had. So the authors were next curious as to how these immune cells were getting from place to place during sleep. What they did is they wanted to block different receptors to see what would happen to the immune cell populations. So they blocked first the GPCR with pertussis toxin and found that overall, uh, there was an increase in monocytes. So GPCR is partially involved in monocyte migration during sleep because this was consistent across both of their groups. They next blocked CCR2 and found that there was a general decrease in monocyte levels in the blood, indicating that CCR2 is partially involved in monocyte migration during sleep. They next blocked ICAM and found that in doing this, monocyte levels were actually not changed whatsoever. However, when they looked at polymorphonuclear cells, they found that blocking ICAM actually increased the amount of PMNs in the blood. So ICAM has an effect on PMN migration during sleep. After getting some insight as to how chemokine receptors are influencing immune cell migration during sleep, they next asked what else could be influencing immune cell migration. To do this, they took a look at some genes that regulate circadian rhythm, also known as clock genes. And in particular, they looked at ARNT1. They blocked ARNT1 and looked at immune cell populations in the spleen and found that when this gene was blocked, there was no difference 
between the levels of monocytes in mice that were kept awake or mice that were allowed to sleep. So this indicates that clock genes play a role in changing monocyte levels during sleep. After getting an understanding of what is causing immune cell population changes during sleep, they next asked what was the functional response of this. They looked at the monocytes and polymorphonuclear cells of mice that were allowed to sleep or kept awake. And specifically, they looked at the reactive oxygen species generation of both these cell types. And they found that mice that were allowed to sleep had increased ROS production, similar to humans. They next asked, what is the functional antimicrobial effect of this? So to do this, they infected mice with Yersinia pestis and looked at bacterial levels over time. They found that mice that were kept awake had increased bacterial levels after 30 minutes and this effect was magnified when looking again after three days. In summary, what the authors found is that sleep enhances the time of day dependent migration of classical monocytes and clock genes were found to be important for the difference in immune cell populations. Furthermore, mice that were allowed to sleep had increased antimicrobial agents, which correlated to their ability to ensure better bacterial clearance and survival upon systemic infection. This information, first off, I think is just neat, but it is also significant in furthering our understanding of how sleep affects our immune system. It's significant because we now have a better mechanistic understanding of how sleep affects immune responses. Furthermore, it empirically shows that monocytes and PMNs are directed by their chemokine receptor activation and illustrates that sleep is essential for maintaining functional immune responses. Now, all science as it stands is basically a stepping stone for new knowledge. And these steps are driven by questions. And I had a few questions of my own when hearing about this information. The first question that I had is what does the increase in immune cells after recovering sleep signify? Is it the beginning of an inflammatory immune response or is it possibly an overcompensation following recovery sleep? Secondly, mice are biphasic sleepers. So they sleep for two distinct periods during the day, one large and one kind of small. So how does this correlate to humans, which have a monophasic sleep pattern? Conversely, if you were to switch to a biphasic sleep pattern, would your immune system function in a similar way to the mouse model? My other question is how else does sleep affect other innate immune responses? We have our cellular responses, but this is aided by the complement system and residual natural antibodies. Furthermore, because they were looking at monocyte level, I am curious to know whether this is influencing M1 versus M2 levels of monocytes and macrophages. A final question though is what do you think? What sort of ideas or questions popped into your head when hearing about this information? I would love to hear your thoughts in the comment section below. Also, let me know if you're interested in any other topics in the future so that way I can cover them. And true to my word, I said that there would be a free NFT at the end of this presentation. So here it is, and this is what it looks like. So if you head on over to Investigate Explore Discover's Twitter page, at Invextus, and give the post with this video a retweet and follow, I will send you this NFT. Now, ultimately, I hope that you learned something, but more importantly, you enjoyed your time doing so. So if you did, give this video a like and subscribe for more in the future. Well, that's everything for today. So we'll see you next time.